Right, welcome back to Way of the Wrench and on today's very special episode I'm going to show you everything you need to know to be safe and healthy when using electric welding machines. So whether it's stick, MIG or TIG, I'm going to show you it all. Let's go. All right, now whether you're welding with MIG, stick, or TIG, these are all electric welding processes and they share a lot of the same safety rules in regards to PPE, uh, having a safe working area and things like that. So this is why I'm making this one all-encompassing safety video for electric welders. Now the machines also have some very unique safety things that are kind of tied to the machine. So I will go into more depth when I do a video on all the machines for safe setup and operation. Electric welding can be an extremely safe process. There are literally more than half a million welders welding around the planet and they're doing this every day and they're having nice long healthy careers in the trade however if you are not following good safe practices you're skipping steps you don't know what you're doing you don't have the proper training electric welding can be dangerous and can cause injury and even death so pay attention all right with electric welding you literally have the potential to burn yourself start a fire cause something to explode, electrocute yourself, and have long-term cancer effects. So there's a lot going on there, but if you are wearing the proper PPE, taking care of yourself, making sure you're protecting others, and watching around what's in your welding area, plus a couple other safety tips, all of that is null and void. So let's get going and we'll start with protecting yourself. Starting at the top of our body and working our way down, the first thing we're going to be worried about is burning the top of our head and our hair from welding sparks, either just from having it come up over the top of the helmet or if we're welding overhead and they're dropping on us. So first thing we can do is put on a welding beanie. Now with a welding beanie like this, I'm protecting the top of my head and they're really cheap. You get them for free from the gas suppliers when you ask them for them. And if you don't like these, you can also get the skull caps that have kind of a flap down the back here. Those are even better at protecting the back of your neck and having sparks not drop in behind underneath your coveralls. Now, besides getting burned, one of the most common injuries for a welder to have, and really any kind of tradesperson, is getting something in their eye. So, safety glasses, it's a no-brainer. We've only got two eyes. You got to do your best to try to protect them at all times. And when you're in the trades, there's all kinds of stuff that can happen. You know, you're chipping or wire brushing some slag off a stick weld bead. You're cutting, uh, trimming the end of the wire off a MIG welder and it randomly flies up into your face. All this kind of stuff is why we're wearing these safety glasses so that we don't get hurt when we're electric welding. Now, whenever you're doing any kind of electric welding, you are creating a really intense light that actually has a lot of radiation coming off of it. You've got infrared radiation, which can actually burn any kind of exposed skin, and you've got ultraviolet radiation, which can cause long-term damage when exposed to it for too long, such as cataracts and cancer. So we have to have something to protect our face and our eyes. Now staring at the light from an electric welding process is never good, even if it's just a few seconds, because you can develop something called welder's flash or arc eye. Now what's happening is the ultraviolet light coming off the welding process is damaging your eyes. And for the first couple moments after you've seen that light and you look away, it's kind of the equivalent of when you look at the sun for a couple seconds and you look away, you'll kind of have to blink and can get your eyes to readjust and you'll think you're okay. But what's happened is there's still been some damage and often several hours later, maybe when you're trying to sleep, the welder's flash will feel like your eyes are super dry. They are really scratchy and there's like sand in your eye. That's what it feels like. And it's really hard to sleep and it can be often quite painful depending on how long you're exposed to it. So make sure you're wearing your helmet. So you've got a couple options when you're picking out an electric welding helmet. You've got these older style here. These are gonna be the cheapest option if you don't have a lot of money. And what they have is a fixed shade lens in here that will protect your eyes from the ultraviolet light and if you want to see what you've done after you weld you can flip this up and there's a clear screen in here so you can see what you're doing or if you need to do some grinding but once you start welding you physically have to flip this down or a little trick of the trade is you get this on your head make sure it's nice and tight and usually you don't want to kind of have to like flip this up with your hands so all you do is you're going to give a good flick with your head and it'll roll right down into position and then Start well. Good general purpose number for the shade is a number 10. That gives you pretty good protection from about 50 amps to 150 amps. If you are gonna go higher than 150 amps, I recommend you go with a darker shade. And the bigger the number, the darker the shade. So something like an 11, 12, 13. And if you're doing some really, really delicate TIG welding, really low amperage, you could get away with going a little bit smaller to maybe a nine or an eight, just depending on what you can see. Now, keep in mind, these also have a clear protective screen that you can change out when they get gross. Take it apart, clean it really well with soapy water, dry it all off, 
And there's another one under here that you can change so that you can really see well what you're doing. And a thing to note, if you wear glasses or you've got uh, problems seeing, having trouble, uh, your eyes getting a little bit older, you can actually put a cheater lens in here, which kind of magnifies it and lets you see a lot more. And the other option are these newer style auto darkening helmets. Now, what makes these cool is if you have this down over your face, you can actually still see through them. They're just slightly tinted. So that lets you set up your work, get yourself all set up. And then as soon as you start welding, that flash of ultraviolet light hits a sensor in here. And within fractions of a millisecond, it flips it to a darkened lens. So now your face and eyes are protected. So pretty cool. Now you can get these helmets with different lens sizes and there's pros and cons to each. You can see on this one, this has got a nice big viewing area here. So we can see a lot more of what we're doing. However, that tends to make this one a little bit more expensive than this. And the lens typically is the heaviest part of this whole helmet. So this one here is gonna be just a touch heavier than this. Yeah, something to think about when you're buying a new helmet. Now, while we're looking at the front of the helmet, another thing to point out is the arc sensors. So you can see the little uh, black circles there. There's three, four on this one. This one's only got one, two. These arc sensors are what's detecting the ultraviolet light and switching our lens for us so that we don't get our eyes damaged. So typically you want to get one that's got more arc sensors because what happens is if something is blocking the light, let's say you're welding within some pipes and kind of stuff, and it's blocking that sensor, or if the sensors start to fail, then that can cause these lens not to switch and cause some eye damage. Now these auto darkening helmets use electricity to switch the lens to their darkened state. And they either do that through a battery or an internal non-changeable battery battery that's charged up by a solar panel or even both. This one here is using a solar panel to charge the battery on the other side so it lasts a long time. All right, looking for the back side of the helmet, there's a bunch of features here we can talk about. First one is you've got a low battery light. If this is ever flashing, that's telling you that the battery is dead. So you can unopen this and change out your battery. And you've got a test function here. So what you do is you hold it up to the light and when you push the test, it should darken on you. If it doesn't and you've got a low battery light, it's probably just battery. If it's not switching and the battery's good, then you got something up with your arc sensors. Okay, right here you've got sensitivity. This is really useful when you're welding with other people welding around you and you're noticing that when you're not wanting it to switch, your lens is switching or flickering because of the other people's flash. So you can change that sensitivity with this one here. This knob shade, this affects how dark your lens is going to go to. Um, I would say probably start with 10, but I recommend that you go to as dark as you can, but being able to see what you're doing. Delay, this is so when it switches back to the fixed shade three lens after you're done welding, this is how fast that switches back. Some people like to have it just a touch longer, but this is really preference based. Now, the other thing over here is there's a weld mode. So obviously when you're welding, you want it on weld, but it has a feature here that you can flick this down onto grind and it will stay this fixed three shield so that it doesn't switch on you uh, from the bright lights from the grinding sparks. So it's just kind of a cool feature that you don't need to have separate safety gear. You can just switch it to grind when you do that, but make sure you switch it back to weld when you were done. Okay, some other things to know about these welding helmets. This is the knob that you tighten on the back of your head. So reach behind once it's on your head, clockwise is tightened, counterclockwise is loosen. These knobs are to tighten or loosen the tension on how hard it is to change the angle of this helmet when it is on your head. Now there are some preset kind of spots on there so that it will sit where you want it when you're welding. Now, whenever you're using these electric welding helmets, they should always be facing up like this, especially since they've got the solar panel that needs to keep them charged. But you never ever put this down like this because first thing, you're gonna scratch up the lenses that you're trying to look through when you're welding. And the second thing is if I was just welding here and I put this down, that plastic's gonna melt, damaging that lens pretty much instantly. Continuing on, what kind of clothing would I recommend wearing while you're doing electric welding? I would recommend things that are fire resistant. So things like jeans, 100% cotton t-shirts, maybe some wools, but I do not recommend wearing any kind of synthetic fibers. So things like shiny dress pants or like the big puffy North Face jackets. First off, those things are gonna get melted and destroyed instantly. And the other thing is they are literally gonna melt and stick to you if you get them on fire. So not good. Now to protect your clothes and give you some added protection from the heat and the ultraviolet lights and cover up any exposed skin, Coveralls are a really good option. Now, an important thing to note that these coveralls are trying to cover up any exposed skin. So there's some key things that you need to be aware of. A lot of welders get a burn right here in a very triangle shape from their t-shirts and from their coveralls being open here. So get yourself a pair of coveralls that has a button right up here and you can do it all the way up to the top and that will prevent you from getting that burn. I've also seen welders attach a piece of flimsy leather on the bottom of their helmet to cover that spot up as well. So it's another option. 
Now, the other thing you're gonna wanna do is these cuffs are kind of big here, so make sure you get a pair that have some buttons on them. Make sure you do them nice and tight so that when you put your welding gloves on, they can fit in there nicely. All right, the next exposed skin that we gotta cover up are these little piggies. So remember, we're gonna be having these right next to that heat source and right next to that ultraviolet light, so we gotta cover these up with something like this. These are welding gloves, and they're gonna be made out of cow leather, so they're nice and durable and heat resistant. And uh, when you're putting these on, make sure that the seams are all intact, you don't have the little fingertips kind of worn or burnt out. And uh, when these things get exposed to heat, they kind of get all hard and crumbly and kind of turn into arthritic fingers. So that's kind of key at that point. You got to get a new pair. Uh, make sure these stay nice and dry. And when you're buying these, make sure they have a nice gauntlet up here that can cover up your sleeves so that you're not getting any sparks down into your coveralls. Now, a little side note about these welding gloves. They kind of make you feel like you got superhuman powers where you can stick your fingers right into heat sources and they don't get burned. But that's only because the cow leather, or the cow skin, if you think about it, is absorbing that heat instead of your fingers. And what happens is it doesn't really get rid of the heat very well. So it starts to get hotter and hotter and hotter until you start to feel it underneath. And by then it's way too late. You're already burning yourself. And these things are crazy hot and you can't get them off fast enough. So, so something to think about. And all the way at the bottom is our last piece of PPE that we have to put on, which is we need to have closed toe shoes. Now, what that means is we have a shoe on that covers the top of our feet, so we don't have any exposed skin for the ultraviolet light, as well as when we have sparks and things falling down, we're not burning our skin instantly. So that means no sandals and no flip-flops. So a better choice for doing welding, especially when you're doing this in the trades, is something like this. All right, these are steel toe safety boots and they have a lot of cool features to keep you safe. One of them being that they have a big steel plate in the toe so that if you drop something heavy, a big piece of metal, you're not going to get hurt. You also can get them with a plate that covers up the shoelace area, which is also protection from things falling, but it will also prevent sparks from getting into your shoes that way. And you can even get them with a steel shank right in the sole to protect the bottom of your feet. Now, some other big features that we are interested in is they're leather, so they're gonna last a long time, they're heat resistant. The bottom of the shoe has a big rubber sole on it so that you are insulated really well from not being a good conductor of electricity while you're welding. And the other thing I would recommend is make sure that you get a nice high top so you get some bit of added ankle protection from welding so you don't get sparks going down into your boots. So these coveralls do a pretty good job of protecting us from the ultraviolet radiation coming off the light. However, they do not do much for the heat and the constant sparks that will burn holes all through your coveralls. So a couple of options for you. If it's really hot out and you really don't want to feel like putting too much on, you can put one of these welding aprons so it leaves your arms kind of unexposed, but otherwise the sparks will jump and just kind of fall down. Or if it's cold, you don't mind putting something else on, you can put something like this. A welding jacket like this is gonna give you all the protection of the welding gloves. So you got a pure cow leather, and uh, they also have the buttons that go up so you can protect your neck. So nice and cool, and if it's cold outside, these are awesome. All right, so now you're pretty much ready to go and start doing some welding, but here are some additional things that you may have not thought about. So do you have a lighter in your pocket? That's a big no-no. Remember, these are pressurized, flammable, exploding devices sitting in your pocket. All it takes is a rogue spark, slight leak in your container, and boom, on the way out, it takes a chunk out of you. And the other thing too is it's 2021, and you're watching a video about health and safety doing welding. What are you doing smoking? Give it a second thought and maybe quit that too. So do you still have any jewelry on? You should not be welding with jewelry like necklaces and earrings and bracelets and rings. They're all pretty much made out of metal which conduct electricity and heat. And there could be some kind of fluke chance where you happen to set up the positive and negative and directly connecting yourself with the electricity. So that's a no-go. So take it off, Mr. T. Are you somebody that wears contact lenses? If that's the case, is it safe to electric weld with contact lenses in? Well, the answer is kind of yes, no, and maybe all at the same time. So it is not recommended whenever you're doing anything that has fine dust particles, such as welding or carpentry or things like that, because it can get stuck in the lenses, your eyes can get inflamed, and really because we're dealing with heat and plastic contact lenses, that doesn't really mix. However, it is safe as long as you are not replacing your contact lenses for proper safety glasses. You need to wear these over top, to protect your eyes, and these will help protect getting stuff in your contact lenses. Now, another thing you might not have thought about is hearing protection. So, such as these earplugs, you should be wearing these anyway if you're in a trades environment, but as an added side benefit, if you wear these when you're welding, you're not gonna get that rogue spark falling into your ear canal and sizzling around in there, and you're mad trying to figure out how to get it out, and you're doing this to try to knock it out, and that's not fun. So, earplugs.
The next really big topic to talk about is what does the area look like where we are going to weld? And there's actually a whole bunch of safety concerns that we need to be concerned about there. So first one is we now have our PPE on and we are protected, but what about everybody else in the shop who may or may not be welding as well? So one of the first things you can do is do all your welding inside of a welding booth. That way the sparks are contained to that one area. They're generally set up already close to where all the welders are. They're gonna have probably some exhaust extraction system in there to suck away all the nasty fumes that you're developing while you're welding. And we've got these tinted curtains so that way we're not flashing ultraviolet light on everyone else in the shop. And then if you're welding on something that's too large to fit inside of a welding booth, then you always have these movable curtains as well. All you have to do is position them around where you're welding and that way you protect everyone else's eyes that are working around you. All right, the next really big thing about our work area while we're electric welding is we cannot have anything in here that will burn or combust or explode on us while we're welding. So things like gas tanks, we can have no gas vapors present. So we can't be welding next to somebody doing a fuel pump on their car, for example. We don't want any paper, we don't want any rags, any spray paints, anything that's going to combust or burn or explode while we are busy trying to weld. Now, the other thing to note is the floors and the walls in the room that you're welding need to be not combustible as well. So we've got concrete floors and concrete walls, so we're safe there. So for those of you that are maybe welding at home in a garage, really make sure that your working area, I would say even up to about 20 feet radius, has nothing combustible so that you are safe while you're electric welding. Now, whenever you're doing any kind of welding, you should know that there are fumes being created off of the welding process and from the filler rods you're using and the fluxes and that kind of stuff, that if you breathe those in over the long term, they have been known to cause cancer. So at the end of the day, we don't wanna be breathing those fumes in. Now, we are lucky enough to have an exhaust fume extraction system so that that takes care of that while we're welding. But if you're doing this at home and you don't have this nice setup, things you can do to protect yourself is wear a good respirator with filters that you change out frequently and weld in a well-ventilated area. Now, another really big concern about our working area when we're dealing with electric welders is the fact that is there water present? Okay, we should be welding in dry conditions because water conducts electricity. So whether we are standing in a big puddle, we're welding wet material, it's raining, it's snowing out, our clothes and our gloves and our boots and socks are all wet, those all could be potentially lethal situations where we become better conductors of the electricity than our actual ground clamp for our machine. Now, does that mean that people don't weld in the rain? No, it happens all the time, but you and your employer do have to take steps and precautions to make sure that you are completely safe and not being a good conductor of electricity. So changing out your clothes, rubber gloves, rubber boots, covering up your electrical equipment so it's not getting rained on, and things like that. Since we've already mentioned that we don't want to make our bodies a good conductor of electricity, I might as well talk about the basic setups for all the electric welders as well. Now, all of these electric welders use electricity. And electricity follows on a path or a circuit. Now, all of the three welders are going to have a ground clamp. Think of this as where the electricity is trying to go to. So if we're going to put it on a table or we're going to put it on a material that we're welding. Okay. Now, the machines will also have a source for our electricity. Now, not getting into AC where you can set it up on a TIG where the electricity technically bounces back and forth. Think of this as where the electricity is coming from. Now, when you are welding, you are putting that electricity into the metal, melting your filler rods and creating your weld. And the electricity gets through to the ground clamp and goes back to the machine. That's what we want in an ideal world. Now, any time you are somehow made part of this circuit, you physically, that is a no-no. That is a chance for injury and death. So what are some examples of some unsafe setups that are potentially quite dangerous for you? Well, the first one is you forgot to put your ground clamp on. You've either still got it on your shoulder, got it on the ground because you took it off to do something, or you still have it clamped to another job that is not connected with what you're doing right now. And you don't know that, so you start welding. And as soon as you start welding, that electricity is looking for a path back to ground. And if you physically are a better conduit for that electricity, that's where you're gonna get really hurt. Now, just to kind of amplify that, if I was wet, and the ground clamp is sitting in a puddle on the ground, that is a really good way to get electrocuted. Electricity is going to flow through you, through the puddle into the ground clamp, and not, not going to be good. 
Now another really common mistake that can happen is that you do have your ground clamp set up to your welding table, but for some reason the electricity cannot get to the ground clamp and it starts searching for other sources to get to ground. So for example, you might have the ground clamp on the metal, but the metal's got paint on it, so it's not letting you go through there. Or another really common thing is you might have kind of like a wooden jig that's kind of temporarily holding pieces and you're doing some intricate work. And when you've got a weld on the metal, well, there's a big chunk of wood between the welding table and your piece, so the electricity can't get to ground, and so it looks for the next best thing, and guess what? That's you. Now, as for how each machine initiates the flow of electricity, they're all a little bit different. On a MIG welder, this is potentially safe until you hit the button. Once you hit the button, the wire will feed out, and as soon as it touches something electrically conductive, electricity starts. So as long as you watch this button, you'll be okay. Now, same kind of thing that happens with a TIG torch. So you've got your electrode here, and electricity will not flow out until you press the pedal. So we've got kind of like a safety feature there as well. Now, when you get to stick welder, we've got kind of a different scenario. I turn on that stick welder, and this electrode now becomes live. So anytime this touches anything that's going to conduct electricity, including maybe your bare hand or a wet glove and you're all soaked, it's going to have that electricity start flowing. So it's something to be aware of with using stick welders. Now another thing about your working area is watch out for tripping hazards. Now sometimes you can't get away from it because you are actively welding, but a good practice is that when you are done welding, take the time, wrap up the cables nice and neatly on the machine so that way they are organized and ready to go for the next time and nobody's going to have an accident. And the last thing I thought I would mention about having a safe working area while you're doing electric welding is that make sure you have the proper training and proper PPE for your unique situation. So for example, maybe you're doing welding in an enclosed space. You are supposed to have supplied fresh air through a respirator in those situations or maybe you are welding up off the ground at higher elevations and you need to have a harness so that you don't accidentally fall to your death so if you're going to know your own situations make sure that you're being safe cool so now you are safe the people around you are safe your working area is safe and uh, here are a couple other things that don't fit cleanly into a category so that you can be safe while you were electric welding never weld on any closed containers. Things like empty propane tanks, empty gas tanks, even things like empty 40 gallon drums that were full of peppermint oil at one point. The reason why is the trace residue of the material that was in there can still give off vapors. As soon as you cut, grind, or weld into these closed containers, they can blow up and often they kill the people doing it. Now when you're electric welding, it's really important to note that the torch, the wires, the electrodes are starting to get crazy hot as you're welding. And when you go to stop to either change your position or readjust your work, it is a crazy bad idea to hang this over your leg and stick this near your nether regions for obvious reasons. Nobody wants to get burned there. However, it's even worse when you're using a MIG welder because if you put this on top of your leg and the leg pushes the button, now you get a 500 degree, 600 degree wire feeding down there too. So really not good. So a really safe alternative is if you need to readjust and stop for whatever reason, hang it on your welder and shut it off. And before you use any of these electric welders, I would do a quick inspection, make sure everything is in good working order before you use them. And if you find anything suspy, either repair it yourself or get a professional to fix it. Now, things you're looking for are just look at your torch cables and your ground cables. Make sure that you don't have any loose connections. Uh, there's no gouges, exposed wires, parts that are on your torch that are chipped or damaged or missing. All that stuff should be in good working order before you start welding. Now, if you're going to open up any of these electric welders, either through service or routine maintenance, you need to shut them off at the machine and unplug them from the wall so that you have no power. Things like a MIG welder, you can actually open them up pretty easy and that's because you need to be able to change out your wire spools and things like that. But there is literally two more labels in here saying that some of these parts have live electricity and enough voltage to kill you. What they're referring to are these positive and negative cable clamps right here. You touch those without any gloves on, you're going to die. So make sure you know what you're doing when you're in here. If you don't know what you're doing, make sure you get a service technician that is trained and is able to deal with this for you. Don't forget the real basics of using these welding machines. Read the operator's manual, read the warning labels, make sure that you understand how to use this machine and set it up safely so that you are not going to get hurt. All right, it's a wrap on another video from Way of the Wrench and on how to become a welder, this time on electric welding safety. Hopefully you were able to get something out of the video and if you did, I would really appreciate a like and a sub. And if you have any questions or concerns, just put them down below in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And until next time, take it easy.